Let's learn about recursions in C programming language. Recursion means reoccurrence of something. In C programming language, we will be using recursive functions wherein the function calls itself repeatedly until certain condition is met. Using these recursive functions, we could write very compact programs, but I admit this is very complicated. Uh, if you are, especially if you are a beginner and this is the first video you are watching about recursive functions, it will be very confusing. So watch this video repeatedly, take a pen and paper and write down whatever I am teaching you in this video. Unless and until you practice it, you won't understand it. Get it right. You won't understand recursion if you don't write a lot of programs involving recursive functions. Also remember, not every program can be written using recursive functions. Only certain type of programs can be written using recursive functions. And, and I'll t tell you what kind of programs at the end of this video. For now, know what is recursive functions. So its definition goes like this. A function calling itself within its own function definition is called recursive function. Okay, understand only this for now. I'll show you an example, a simple example to understand the concept. Let's print natural numbers from 1 to 3 using recursive functions. Why just 1 to 3? Because you need to know, you need to keep track of function instances. So we don't have enough space on the screen. So I'm just taking from 1 to 3. You could, once you understand this, you could take for 1 to 5, 1 to 10 or whatever under your capacity. So this is our program, write this down. We have two parts in it main method and natural method. We initialize a variable num to 1 and we call natural method and pass 1 to it. 1 is less than or equal to 3. Yes, it's true. So we call natural once again. Okay, we call the same function within its function definition. Only this time we are passing num plus 1 which is 1 plus 1. So we are calling natural function once again. So the instance of this function the definition gets created and pushed onto the stack only this time we are passing one plus one that is num plus one means one plus one gets passed to this instance the next ins instance so two is less than three is true again call natural and pass two plus one which is three another instance of this method is pushed onto the stack now three is less than or equal to three yes true now call the same function pass three plus one which is 4, which is not great, not equal to 3. So return statement gets executed. The control comes back to this calling function and execute the, executes the remaining code here. So remaining code means it prints the value of num, which is 3. Again, there is a statement called return, which returns the control back to the calling function. And it executes the remaining code, which has printf there, which prints the value of num. Again, there is a return statement which gets executed, which transfers the control back to the calling function and the remaining code gets executed. Here also we have printf which prints the value of num, which is one and the return statement gets executed. Finally, the control shifts to the calling function that is main. So once the return is executed, the instance get po gets popped out of the stack or gets deleted. So once return is executed, control shifts to the calling function and this instance gets popped out of the stack, that is gets deleted from the stack. This happens to this too, control shifts to the calling function and this function instance gets popped out or gets deleted from the stack. And the same holds good for these two functions, including the main function. Once return is executed, these things, instances and memory associated with these instances gets gets popped out or deleted from the stack only the output remains on your console window stack means it's a mem data structure okay don't worry about it right now so this is how stack works the calls gets stacked in the memory stack now four is not less than or equal to three so it executes return statement once it returns to the calling method it executes the remaining code there there is printf statement in each instance so it prints the value of num there natural of one is present inside the main method so which has no printf there so it don't print anything so once return is executed the instances gets deleted or popped out of the stack like this this is only the representation by the way so let me write the code we initialize num to one 
and call the method natural and pass num to it. The initial value is 1. Let me write the function definition here. So our function doesn't return anything except the control. So its return type is void. So inside function, I'll check if the past number, past value is less than or equal to 3. If that's true, let me call the function natural and pass the value num plus 1 to it. After that, let me print the value of num. So outside this, if we could simply write return explicitly or else it still returns the control back to the calling function. That's how programs work. Yes, it's working. So, so here is our first function call which passes 1 to it. Okay, this is the first in instance in the stack. So once this gets called repeatedly, the stacks, the stack, memory stack starts getting filled. Once the return executes, these values gets displayed on the screen because we have printf after the function call, that is after the function calls itself. So hope you understood this. This is very simple once you write a lot of programs using recursive recursive calls okay until then it's very confusing and stack and all you need to understand that while learning data structures for now just know that stack is a data structure which follows lifo method which is last in first out method uh, don't over complicate this right now just rewatch this code or please visit the link present in the description section of this YouTube video for notes about recursion, whatever you saw in this, in this video. Just learn that. There are many things to learn in this recursion. Uh, if you go on, there are four types of recursive functions like direct recursive function, indirect recursive function, tail recursive function, non-tail recursive functions. And we have definition for all these types of recursive functions. And I can show you n number of examples for each type of recursive function so it gets very complicated and i can go on and on and take five hours of lecture in this video itself which is not going to help you in any way unless and until you start practicing you start writing the programs which involves recursion and recursive functions okay so two things you need to do take pen and paper keep track of function instances as and when the function calls itself okay that's one thing take out your favorite editor c editor and type the program and check the output if you get wrong output come back to your paper and check the instances of function call and in each instance how the value of variables changes keep track of it and then modify your program and execute once again. This is very, very fun if you start understanding it. And it's very annoying if you don't understand the basics. If you don't practice using pen and paper and you're by actually typing the programs involving recursive functions, you are going to have very hard time in learning C programs because recursive functions are used a lot while writing big programs uh, which involves repeated execution of same lo logic by just changing the argument values in all such cases people use recursive functions because it makes sense instead of writing code repeatedly it makes sense to use recursive functions okay so as I told you in the beginning of this video, not all programs can be written using recursive functions. Only certain type, types of programs can be written using recursive function. So what type of programs? The type of programs wherein you repeatedly execute the same, same code. So you may ask for that, uh, for, for the same reason you, you start, started writing functions, right? Yes, that's true. These uh, recursive functions are 
bit smarter than your regular functions. Here, you just change the value passed to the function and you accomplish the task. Okay, it's very simple. You will understand it when we start explaining about Fibonacci series, factorials, factors, all these programs using recursive functions. You will know how compact the code gets and how easy it is if you understand it, if you only understand it. Again, if you understand it, still write the code yourself, take pen and paper, practice it, keep track of the instances, that is function instances, that is recursive call function instances on your paper, understand it initially. Going forward, there is no need to use pen and paper always. In some cases, yes, you need to use it even if you are an advanced user or an expert. Recursive functions will not let you be an expert. It will teach you something even if you feel you are an expert. So keep learning. So this is first example, first video in this recursive series. It is very hard to teach. So if you didn't understand, I'm very sorry if I am not teaching this effectively. So please visit the link present in the description section of this YouTube video because we have text notes there wherein, wherein you might understand this concept clearly, basic concept. This is very important. Basics in every field, in every programming language, in any other field, basics are the building blocks. If your base is strong, only then your building will stand for longer. With that note, please Please, please watch this video repeatedly and understand this logic before going to next programs which uses recursive functions. Please visit the link present in the description section of this YouTube video for source code notes and discussion about this topic. Stay subscribed to our YouTube channel and blog and please share this video with your friends using your WhatsApp, Telegram, LinkedIn, LinkedIn, Twitter and Facebook etc. And please do not forget to like this video on YouTube. Thank you.